Does NoFap increase your testosterone? This is one of the most frequently asked questions in the NoFap community. And it seems to be a bit of a controversial topic as well, because some people say, yes, it definitely does. Other people say, no, it is absolute nonsense. So in this video, I'm gonna pull up some actual scientific studies on the topic, and I'm gonna talk about some points of which I think might get you really excited. So stick around to the very end of this video because especially the last part, it covers a point that is very interesting and a lot of people don't seem to know about yet. The first study that I'm gonna talk about is the most famous study in the NoFap community. This is a study that showed that when abstaining from ejaculation, men had an increase in testosterone to 145.7%. But here's the deal with this study. Testosterone raised over the course of the first week peaked at day seven, then dropped back down to normal on day eight and stayed normal during the second week. So it is not like you permanently have that 145.7% testosterone. And a lot of people seem to use this as an argument to say that this study proves that nothing happens in the long term because they say it's just this little peak and then after nothing happens. But there are a couple of things that I, I think you should understand about this study. The first one is that this study looked at a period of 16 days total. So yes, this study proves that testosterone stayed flat in week two, but it has no idea what happens after in weeks three, four, five, etc. And a lot of people who try NoFap will say that the first week feels as if your lust and your energy is rising, kind of along with what the graph of the study says. Then the second week feels a lot more flat. It's easier, you don't feel as lustful, but you also don't really have as much energy. Again, roughly in line with what the study says. But then, if you keep going and you get to the weeks three, four, five and on, it eventually starts to feel as if your energy and lust starts climbing again, almost as if your testosterone is raising. And now again, this is anecdotal, okay? We don't know if this has anything to do with testosterone. It might not have anything to do with testosterone, but it might also do have something to do with testosterone. There are no scientific studies that look at what happens to testosterone in these further weeks. And unlike a lot of people will try to make you believe, this specific study that we are talking about does not prove that testosterone stays flat in the long term. All it proves is that testosterone stayed flat in week two. Now the next thing I think you should know about this study is that testosterone wasn't just raised on day seven. The peak, was at day seven. But if we take a look at the actual numbers in the study, then in my humble opinion, and you don't have to agree with my opinion, okay? You can form your own opinion about these numbers. You can get as excited about them as you want. A lot of people will probably say, well, you know, these numbers are not that big. It doesn't really mean anything. But in my opinion, days five, six, and eight look quite impressive as well. Testosterone is definitely raised by at least a little bit on these days. And so if you are to do something like ejaculate once every eight days, and if you really want to do this, then I'd highly recommend that you don't do so with the dirty websites. And we kind of have to ignore all the pro semen retention arguments just for the sake of this example. But if you are to hypothetically ejaculate once every eight days, this would mean that out of every eight days, you would have your testosterone raised by at least a bit every four out of eight days, which is literally half of the time. But it gets even better because this number, 145.7%, this was just the average of the study. And there were actually people participating in this study who had their testosterone raised to 197.3%, which is practically double, right? They practically doubled their testosterone on day seven. Now, sadly, this study doesn't show what their testosterone levels were like on day six and eight. But I think it is safe to assume that if their testosterone levels were around 200% on day seven, that on day six and eight, you know, they might have had, and this is just me speculating, but they might have had like 120%, 130%, maybe even 140, 150. And so this would mean that there are people that if they were to do the once every eight day strategy, that they would walk around with their testosterone between let's hypothetically say 130% and 200% several days out of the week. Now, again, I'm not telling you guys what to believe. You can get as excited about these numbers as you want. But in my opinion, 
to me, all of these facts combined, I think this is pretty impressive. And it gets even more impressive because there are also scientific studies done in rats that show that there is a link between ejaculation and androgen receptor activity, where these so-called Kuma rats had their androgen receptors decline. Now, in case you don't really know what this means, let me very briefly explain this to you. A hormone on itself doesn't do that much, but it needs to interact with a so-called receptor in order to actually do its job. And so the effectiveness of a hormone in our body is not just dependent on the amount of the hormones that we have, but it is also dependent on the receptors. Now, the perfect example of this would be type 2 diabetes. This is a disease where people's insulin isn't really working correctly anymore. Now, the problem they have is not that they don't have enough insulin. They have more than enough insulin, but the problem they have is that their receptors have gone numb, and so their receptors can't actually use the insulin anymore. And so now, apparently, these studies in rats show us that a similar thing is probably happening to testosterone. If you fap a lot, your body will decrease its androgen receptors, and so your body can't actually use the testosterone as effectively anymore. And so when you go on no fap, this will make your androgen receptors start to work again. And so even if your testosterone level itself doesn't change that much, it will probably change how well your receptors can actually deal with that testosterone. And so in some way, you will get the same benefits as if your testosterone level would have been raised. And if you keep fapping all the time, you keep destroying your androgen receptors, and you will become weaker and weaker and weaker. Now, if you guys think this is interesting, I do. I'm, I guess I'm biased. I think it's interesting. But if you guys also think this is interesting, it might just get even more interesting because there isn't just evidence that cooming decreases your antigen receptors, but there is also evidence that it increases estrogen receptors. So this whole story gets even worse or it gets better if you do a lot of nofap. I guess that if you, if you do a lot of nofap, the story gets better for you. And if you do a lot of fapping, the story gets worse for you. Now, this is something that I'm gonna talk about in my next video. I will upload that, that video this Friday. So if you wanna see that video, I suggest you click the subscribe button, you click the notification bell, so you get a notification once that video is up. If you watch this video at a later point in time and not directly after I uploaded it, then that next video will already exist, in which case I will put it up here. If you liked this video, you're definitely gonna like the next video as well. I suggest you check it out. If you want to help me out, click the like button, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.